I've gotten to experience that. So I want to again thank Dan and also, holy crap, guys! Like so many cool, beautiful, interesting products. Like this is. I mean, we just came back from New York, and honestly, I think what you all are doing is cooler. So, thank you very much. Um, we're going to do a two-part presentation. I'm going to start with um, what we're all about, and then uh, Dave will take over with the demo. So there's a thank you, and you started with thanks. Okay, so let me first tell you what we're about. Uh, I have a company called My Wishlist, and it's about being able to put your wish list on Facebook. Dave and I are co-founders. Uh, basically happened when my girlfriend was like, you know, my, I can never remember what my, what to tell my mom I want for my birthday. I wish I could just throw it up on Facebook when I actually do something. So we have been investigating this whole thing, and this weekend is part of it. And what we've learned is that wish lists really suck. In fact, they're kind of fucking retarded. Um, Chase, PayPal, Amazon, a bunch of really big brands with a lot of money have tried to make wish lists work and failed miserably. And the ones who are out there sticking it out, um, like the fancy who you can't see for obvious reasons, um, they're not getting the kind of traction you would expect from, let's face it, the holy grail of social e-commerce. People willingly telling you what their purchasable intent is. I think it all starts with, what is a gift? So it makes sense, right? A gift is an item that you go shopping for off of a list. Now it's a list you might have in your head, or it's a list that someone might give to you. The problem with that is that while that looks like the perfect thing for a wish list to be done with, it's pretty myopic, right? It's only one item. It's only one piece of the puzzle. Gifts are so much more than an item. They're self-expression. We see all the time people saying things like, I want to get something cool for my aunt because I want her to think of me as a cool niece. We see people say things like, I'm really concerned about my social identity. So some of the people, we've interviewed up to 50 people, really in-depth interviews. And one of the things that we, we heard actually consistently was, I don't want to tell people what's on my wish list because they'll think of me differently. Maybe they'll think I'm superficial. Maybe they'll think I'm, you know, extravagant. And so in all of these conversations, what was universal was the depth of emotion. Um, honestly, in having one-on-one -on -one conversation with both strangers and just people I kind of know, I haven't seen these kinds of really strong emotions in any other circumstance socially than like the death of a pet. People who give a gift and it gets re-gifted feel isolated, they feel alone. People who give a gift and someone calls them back and says, that is exactly what I wanted and I didn't even know, they feel a sense of self-worth. So gifting is freaking complex. And that's really what we're talking about, right? The thing is, the reason nobody's getting this right is because it's really, really complicated. And so brands with tons of money and lots of smart people aren't solving it. They're not solving dislocation within the gift marketplace. The social awkwardness that we feel. How do we tell people what we want? Maybe when we don't even know. How do they know what to get us? That's a Google problem. And we wanted to take advice from you know, the guy who said it. You want to be like Google, find a really complex problem and solve it. So we have bootstrappable business, you know, revenue generating businesses. This isn't one of them, right? This isn't one where we can go find a bunch of market research to tell us what to do. In fact, a lot of the data that's out there is completely self-serving. This is about dealing with complexity, which Dave and I have a lot of experience in. We've, uh, I've consulted with over 50 uh, companies in a wide variety of industries. Dave uh, had experience uh, building CPAL from a 10 to $30 million a year company. And it was all about handling complex business requirements or consumer uh, marketplaces, utilizing technology in new and interesting ways. Bottom line is we're designing a startup to go into this complexity and learn. Because if we learn, we create traction. And if we create traction, we win. So what we're here doing this weekend is building a learning machine. We started with uh, a Facebook wish list app, and this was part of our New York uh, boot camp. Um, and uh, what we saw is that people like to use it, nice conversion rates, but the cost per acquisition was pretty high when you used Facebook ads, which is how we got them in. So we did the hard thing. We built the app. So Brian and I uh, spent a lot of time wondering what the hell we're doing in this space because it's so complex, and we decided we're just going to dive in. We're going to do some market research. 
So people come to our site and they say, uh, you know, I want a cool black watch. And we're going to give them a cool black watch. It might be the one they want. They say, yeah, that's the one I want. We're going to ask them a little bit more about it. They say, oh, okay, I want one with a metal band. And they go ahead and they add this. We're going to go ahead and congratulate them. Awesome, you made a cool wish, right? I've got five seconds, so I want a sled. And we're going to do that. And of course, that's the one I want because I have five seconds. And we do this. And now we're going to ask them to go ahead and share this with other people as well. So you can see the list and you can share it with your friends. Demo there because everything absolutely works. It's a hundred percent working app that we made since uh, Friday. So. Awesome. Questions? Questions? Yeah. How do you make money off this? That's a good question. Um, so the thing about making money with this business is that it's actually pretty easy. Um, it's not a challenge. Do we still have this presentation now? Yeah, right there. I can't find it. Um, right, so for instance, if we have five, five wish list items, what we have is a set of keywords around purchasable intent, which we can use for a suggestion engine. That suggestion engine has multiple applications. For instance, if you're having a fire sale around the holiday, right, people want to buy gifts for people they forgot to get gifts for, they could go to their Facebook profile, and maybe they're not going to get a single one of those items, but we can suggest a gift card that would be perfect for that person, or a daily deal that would be perfect for that person. So the suggestion engine is powerful. You know, in the next three months, how are we going to make money? Well, we've got, obviously, Amazon affiliate. Like, they process 158 transactions per second during a holiday. We can tap into some of that. Uh, we already talked about the gift card. Starbucks has a Facebook gift card. We can play with that. And Yipit, which is a daily deal aggregator, I think is a uniquely, you know, interesting strategic partnership that we're exploring. So, one of the things I really want to emphasize is that we are deliberately going into this space with a data, not monetization mindset because everyone else went in with a monetization mindset and came out with nothing. So we're specifically looking at the social value pain points, the social value exchange, and what we can do to make that rewarding. And you'll see that kind of in the design of the app, and we went through it really quickly. But basically, what we're trying to do is really give you kind of a market research study about intent without you knowing it. But so you're sharing your wish list with us, and we have basically pluggable sections in there where we can do A-B testing and look at behavior. And there's a huge analytic backend that we've built on it, so everything you do is stored in the database regardless of whether you want it or not. And there's click maps and there's heat maps and transfers and stuff on that. So, you know, like Brian said, we're looking for intent behind gifting, right? Everybody else was trying to make a wish list. We already know they suck and that's a dead end, right? So if we can figure out intent behind gifting, eventually we're going to get to a spot where we come with some disruptive idea from a customer or a group <coughs> of customers that nobody else is going to get to. And, uh, I'm not trying to solve the whole pie, but you know, Google doesn't provide us with accurate search results. They provide us with more accurate search results. This is the same thing, providing context. So it's still driven, though, by an individual telling you what they want. Kind of. And then um, that list is out there for their gift givers to look at. Nope. Okay. Tell us more about that. So, okay, well, I gave you so many different reasons people do gifts, right? We're going to test all of them. I gave you so many different potential intentions that people have around relating to each other. We're going to test them. All of these are ways that we can test acquisitions to get users to play with. But the whole point of this is I'm going to tell you right now, I have no freaking clue what really works in the gifting space and no one does either. So taking a very lean approach to test, experiment, and test is how we believe we're going to find a secret sauce. It may be really niche, right? It could be like, we just found the one hack that makes mobile gift cards actually work. But it's about exploring the social space first to find the secret sauce. I think the monetization is easy if you get it right, you know? <laughs> Talk about your thoughts about gamification. Yeah, so the gamification actually was a latecomer because I didn't want to like slap it on. But when we really started to look at this process that we're taking users through or we're sort of building a relationship with them the way that uh, Wufu or MailChimp does, right? We're going to talk, we're going to converse. Doing that, we get to the point where they're going to share or invite their friends, and then we had an idea. What if every time their friend signs up, we send them points? And those points count toward the lottery where we would grant one of their wish lists. 
So the idea is we're not directly incentivizing them, right? We don't want to pollute the social value. You're doing the wish list to put up what you want, and then you're sharing it, or you're asking your friends what they want for social reasons. But we want to incentivize tight networks. We want 20 users in the same social group, not 20 and 20 social groups. So this is the way that we'll create a back-end notification, and we'll say, hey, a friend of yours just signed up. You get these points. Um, so it, it gave us, it's giving us a tie-in, and we're going to play with that. And of course, the lottery is a nice effect. The wish list gifting is a good story. Thanks. Thanks.